first step is discover, and it's about a deep sense of empathy for the people for whom you're trying to solve a problem. So uh, in the entrepreneurial space, a lot of people come into entrepreneurship because they have an idea and they want to go build it. They don't necessarily come into the entrepreneurial space because they identify that someone has a problem and they want to go solve it. It's a different frame, and that requires a deep level of empathy and a deep level of understanding. I mean, you all work in organizations. You all work with people. And I think you have to be intentional about coaching the entrepreneurial mindset. As a leader, you have to be model in chief. Like you have to fail in front of them, you have to participate in front of them, and you have to have a really, and hear me on this, a nice mix of vulnerability with ego. Learning how to identify and articulate them, and then identify the event of departures, and, and really focus on, and on separating the problems and then linking the solutions to each problem, I think that's a great way to teach people how to innovate. If you give somebody um, the freedom to go out and solve a problem versus telling them, here's what you need to go and do and here's how to go do it, they'll probably push the boundary all the way to the edge of that freedom and come back and surprise you and probably teach you something you didn't know. And so a very, very important thing when it comes to innovation and creativity is to <laughs> separate the generation of ideas from the evaluation of ideas. Those should be two distinctly different processes. Are, so the idea Empathy. There's always room for empathy. There's always room for understanding what other people are thinking or how they're operating. Um, that's something that we sort of often forget because we're so busy trying to build, to hit the learning objectives or to figure out what the standards are and to meet those standards that we don't necessarily take time to understand how other people are creating an understanding. They know about the internet of things. Mm -hmm. They don't worry about whether there's a software package or whether they got a, you know, no kid has ever said, give me more PD. Right. Ever. They just go on right. to the internet and they're like, here's a problem I'm trying to solve, but that seems interesting. Here's a beta version. Let me put it together. We've got to teach adults, uh -huh. even in different Agreed. verticals, how to do that to, to get the change we want. Every major innovation that we've seen in the last five years in terms of competency based, MOOCs, et cetera, came from a university. So basically, <laughs> You know, they had business help, but like somebody said, right. we will look at what we can purposefully abandon. Embracing that obstacles are often just design constraints. Mm -hmm. uh, and that frame switch means something different to me. So what that means is the things that we are that we are saying are preventing us from doing something are often the things that are gonna make the solution the most beautiful. The point is somebody will do it. Mm -hmm. It can be you or it can be somebody else in the future, so I 